Hey everybody, welcome back. It's been a while, so I figured I'd give you another update on the tank. Um, a lot of stuff has got, happened, but you can see everything is doing great still. And um, had a lot of fish deaths, uh, could not pinpoint the cause. Um, did have a, a spike in temperature. My Jaeger heater was uh, really bumping it up to 82 83 degrees in here um, and being an acrylic tank it was not too good it was very the acrylic insulates the heat and um, i'm thinking that might have contributed to some fish aggression but uh, yeah so i had some fish deaths had a spike in nutrients had some hair algae growing got a sea hair sea hair uh, actually disappeared after two three days he was doing a great job you could actually see the hair algae flying like he was just shredding it in there and then he just disappeared crawled under a rock and gone um and that freaked me out a bit because it was a you know sea hair is a pretty fleshy meaty little critter and uh so i, I rearranged the rock looking for him i ended up not finding him and that freaked me out so i was thinking you know i had a complete nutrient spike in the middle of a hair algae um outbreak but luckily I decided to go ahead and take care of that with fluconazole, not worry about the uh, nutrients. And then, um, but luckily with the experience I have, I kept the nutrients under control and came through that pretty well. Um, was freaking out for a while, but as you can see, everything's doing great. Fluconazole just wiped out the hair algae again. It wasn't bryopsis, it was the, uh, like the brown green hair algae, the very wispy stuff. And, um, after the whole ordeal was over, and this was about uh, three weeks ago, my nutrients were actually very low, even with the skimmer off and um, uh, the reactor not running. Basically what you have to do with no carbon for the uh, fluconazole to take its course. My nutrients were undetectable, no nitrate, no phosphate. I still have Chato in there that survived and it's growing now again. Um, but I started noticing the coral were getting very pale and so I started looking it up and uh, decided, which I, I've done before, I dosed nitrates and phosphates before but it didn't work out so good. But this time I'm dosing only nitrates and um, I'd say about a week and a half, two weeks after beginning the nitrate dosing, which I'm using uh, the Bi uh, Brightwell Nitro things started to turn around. The coloration started to get a lot more intense on the coral, as you can see. I mean, it's, they're just radiating right now. And um, I decided not to do the phosphate because just algae reasons. I believe the hair algae just explodes on phosphate like steroids. So I wanted to get a good balance of that. So I also doubled my feeding. And that's something I didn't talk about when I, I thought I was feeding a lot and I would feed the coral a good bit, the, uh, you know, reef roids and, and stuff like that and um, aqua vitro fuel I would put in the tank, but the fish weren't getting a lot of food. I would put one cube a day and kind of like split that in between two feedings, but now I've just doubled it down and put two cubes a day and um, they're getting fatter not looking as skinny as they usually did. So I think that was contributing to one major factor in my tank that just went against everything I, I thought I learned was keeping nutrients low. And um, everything you see is you want nitrates and phosphates low, 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 but 
It's it doesn't do so well, especially after you've seen all my videos where I dose notepox and everything. It's just the conclusion I have after all these years is just low nutrients are bad for the tank, just flat out bad. The corals basically starve, and th they'll survive, but they will not grow. Um, so right now I'm sitting at about two parts per m million of uh, nitrate and 0 0.02 of phosphate, and what I'm doing is. Um, you know, I was hoping to get more nitrate, but I'm, I'm fine with that roughly around two. It might be even a little bit less, but what I'm doing is dosing nitrate only. And what seems to be happening is that is also keeping a, uh, a balance on the phosphate for the beneficial bacteria in the tank. This, and these are all my theories and just my personal, um, observations of, of, of through the years that the, uh, you know, I could feed a lot more, maybe throw three cubes in here a day, and I, I could probably take it, and gradually the tank will build up to being able to take that kind of load, but it probably won't be good because what seems to happen is you get runaway phosphate, and there's just an imbalance in the food of nitrate to phosphate, and it seems you get a lot more phosphate out of, out of a situation like that, and what I'm thinking I'm doing, and I'm gonna continue this experiment, is helping the red field ratio. So by increasing the nitrate, I'm hoping to increase the beneficial bacteria and other organisms in the tank to have an ability to grow off of the nitrate to also off balance the um, phosphate. And so far, so good. Like I said, it's, it's been sitting right at 0 0.02 part per million on phosphate and the tank has never look better. I might have said that a few times, but it's it's looking pretty damn good. And um, and since the fish deaths and everything, I actually had stunted growth on a lot of the coral, especially the acros and the SPS. I just, I was able to watch those corals grow week by week and I noticed they just stopped. Um, the nutrients was deprived. There was a spike in, in the ammonia and the fish deaths and the sea hair, but um, Again, I'm back at watching these corals week by week, noticing the growth on the tips and everything. And um, yeah, that's what's been going on. And as you can see, uh, there was a GSP rock there where now I have a torch rock, which I must say looks freaking awesome. I think everybody should have a torch rock now. Um, but the GSP was actually, before all this happened, was growing so fast that it was expanding and spreading on the sand bed trying to get to the other rock and I had it nicely contained on that rock thinking you know the GSP won't it, it won't grow on the sand bed but it, it started to grow on the sand bed and started branching out in every direction just trying to just explode and growth it was just wanting to take over so I decided to get that rock out of here before it spread and I was you know razor blading GSP off of rocks so yeah that's it and um and you can see from the early videos of that uh, torch coral here, I believe it is a dragon soul torch, which is insane because I saw this torch on, um, let me try to focus it on, on worldwide corals for $400 a head. And I'll be honest, I paid about $40 for it. And you saw in the early videos, it was dying. So I think, um, it just did not know what it was and it was brown and didn't have gold like it does now and as you can see what nutrients do it brightens up coral I mean they're just radiating in color and um, polyp extension is great and you can see a, a good bit of new fish in here um, that's another thing if you uh, watch there's a very good channel um, very super informative is uh, Amro Azul, and he specifically talks about this nutrients of phosphate, um, nitrate, and phosphate. And he even goes over some peer reviewed papers about the issue. And um, one thing he was saying was, uh, and, and in those papers he was going over, what they were saying was uh, dosing nitrate or phosphate is not necessarily good, but the nutrients you get from the fish waste itself and, and those nutrients would, um, will really grow 
coral faster. The spike in growth was seen mostly by the nutrients of the fish in your tank. So that might even be another thing, especially with advancements in the hobby, as when I started years ago, um, about six years ago, right when LED lights were getting pretty popular um, in the beginning. It, they were saying, you know, in this tank, I should have three or four fish. I have about eight right now, I think, uh, somewhere around there. Um, I'm trying to double the load of what they said. And everything's been going good, and the thing you want to do, saying the best thing to do is to control any algae growth with natural herbivores in the tank. The, um, you know, tangs, uh, turbo snails, urchins, things like that, sea hares, um, to control that because naturally in the wild, algae grows everywhere. There's no way around it. There's algae on reef tanks, on, on reef, natural reefs, and um, to not have it in your reef tank is, uh, is probably, you're probably nutrient deprived without any kind of um, herbivore animals in there eating it you're probably nutrient deprived if you don't have some sort of type of algae, even coralline algae. And another thing I noticed, my coralline algae is starting to um, grow a lot more now. So that might have been an issue why I never had coralline algae. I was always nutrient deprived. So uh, a long lesson it took to learn this one, but um, the past two years has been where I've been picking it up on this and some of you probably caught on earlier, but I just want to throw that out there. If you're new to this hobby, um, these are things, if you start seeing pale coral, it's not your trace elements being off or bad. And that's what I used to always think. It was my trace elements were not good. But the thing is you're most likely nutrient deprived. So check those nitrates and phosphates. And if you're undetectable on nitrates, you need to change that. Um, and you change that and I guarantee you'll see positive results. So that's what's been going on. Some lessons I've been learning the past few months um, and concluding more confident and telling you guys this. And uh, other than that, everything is going good. Uh, still rocking the diffusers, of course, and um, corals are loving it. And that's been going pretty good. I'm gonna expand. Hopefully I'm gonna have the Hydra 52 diffusers here uh, in the next couple weeks. Um, I spend days and nights on these 3D printers and I also have something else coming out, a new tool for the tanks to help, uh, help the issues of uh, nutrient export and um, that will be coming out in the next couple months too. So yeah, um, 3D reefing has been going good. We got the Instagram page and um, the Facebook page and the customers have been great and the reports on the diffusers have also been good. So that is moving forward. Um, I was worried if there was enough sales, I probably wouldn't be able to carry it on, but it's been doing pretty well. So that's gonna keep moving forward. And uh, just the response on those um, controversial subjects, especially online, it's kind of controversial when you get a lot of these guys just not understanding what it is, which I find very hard I can't understand why they just some people just don't understand what a diffuser is and and uh, I think a lot of it has to do with with aqua illumination claiming the lights are diffused already but that is kind of a uh, uh, half truth the um, the lenses are actually diffused but the entire cluster is not and that's what these diffusers do so yeah, don't want to talk about diffusers too much because I just miss doing the hobby itself. And like you guys know, if you've been following the channel a lot, I'm just a hobbyist and just kind of fell into that whole other thing. So it's doing pretty good. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, you know what to do. And um, if you're new, subscribe and uh, follow me as I am always doing something and coming up with new things or trying to at least. So. Yep, yeah, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.